make it a week later. Okay. Right. <clears throat> uh, hi, I'm Simon Mercer, and this is Crave. It's a podcast and a video cast. A video cast where Steve McCabe and I are talking about music and movies and pretty much anything that's been entertaining us the last week or so. The last week or so, absolutely. And, and I would say, Simon, that. Um, Lots to talk about this week. <laughs> it's our last um, episode. Yes. Episode number 74 uh, since our inception. Uh, well, we've got um, a big music star who's been in the country this week. We Certainly have. if you're a fan of country music. Uh, and aren't we all? Uh, well, I wasn't a huge fan of her, but I'm, I, I, yeah, my views have been changed somewhat. We're talking about Shania Twain. Absolutely. Now, I know that in addition to Shania Twain in concert, You've been watching concert videos, haven't you? I have, I know. It's a guilty pleasure. I know. Um, this chip here, Springsteen. Springsteen. <laughs> uh, Springsteen on Broadway. Oh, yeah. So this is, it's just come, been released for Christmas. This is a CD and also a Netflix film, which is showing the two and a half hours of his more than year-long Broadway show. Oh, right. In front of a very small audience each yeah. night, five nights a week. Yeah. And... A year down the track, we get a chance to have a look at what it's like, I think, and because I'm a huge Springsteen fan, I, don't right, think, yeah. I know you're going to say this, Steve, I think it's so good. Well, I had a feeling we were going to get a very um, balanced and you know, totally subjective opinion <laughs> there. Yeah. So anyway, so so in addition to live music, recorded music, we've got a film to talk about as well, haven't we? Yeah, pretty good one, I thought. Yeah, we've got um, The Children Act. This is um, Stanley Tucci, and well, it's not fair, I shouldn't mention him first at all, should I? No, you shouldn't. No, I glanced down at my notes here, and his name caught my eye first. <laughs> but the star of the show, obviously, is Emma Thompson. I don't know why I didn't mention her. No, first. no, no. Well, and she is, oh, it's, it, the story is centred around her. She plays this, this judge. It's based on an Ian... Um, McEwen's novel. Yes. Uh, you nearly said Ian McKellen, didn't you? I did. <laughs> Very, was, that was dangerously close there, yes. Oh, no. Uh, and it's um, a serious, heartfelt story about yeah. a judge played by Emma Thompson and what she has to do in a case where a teenage boy, he's suffering from leukemia and the parents who are Jehovah's Witnesses don't want him to have a blood transfusion. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, and one other thing, we've got to wrap up the year, aren't we? Absolutely, yes. We'll do our best and probably more fun. We'll do our worst. <laughs> yes. Right. So, Shania Twain, big star in the country music world for years. Yeah. Big crossover performer. Yep. Um, Canadian. Yes. And also, in some ways, a New Zealander. Yeah. Because uh, I think a lot of New Zealanders would know her quite well from being a a lander, a property owner here in the South yeah, Island. She owns a decent chunk of the South Island, yeah. and yet this was apparently her first time actually performing. Yeah, yeah and she made a point of... that she's been buying up bits. <laughs> yeah, and she made a point of saying that she, she did. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for sharing your country. Yeah, with me. and you know, um, I was had a chance to uh, meet one or two people outside waiting to go in, Steve. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, I got a real sense of how much Shania Twain means. To some people, um, there was a, a, it was a pretty st- strong represented female audience, right, I thought. Yeah, yeah. And she's um, one woman I spoke to her, uh, Vicky from Kawarau, uh, told me that um, you know she's regarded her as somewhat of an icon, right? A, a, a trailblazer for um, women performers, writing her own material, yeah. telling stories about her own life, but stories that other people could respond to, um, and had been through her, old tri- her own trials and tribulations, which I didn't know this until later. Did you know she'd lost her voice for 15 years? You mentioned that to me just earlier. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And, and, and I, other people said, oh, oh, Shania Twain, she's the one whose who's, uh, personal assistant did the dirty behind Shania's back and had an affair with Shania's husband and then later married the husband. I didn't know that either. I had no idea. <laughs> I, I, I just thought she sang slightly cheesy songs. Yeah, but. well, so that, but the thing about it, I thought, Steve, was all this backstory is yes. the stuff that the true fans will know. Of course, of course. And it, I guess that makes them feel that the, the, the artist is a real person. That, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Shania Twain, I didn't know, apart from, I guess, the big, big hits. like. So, so we've got Man, I Feel Like a Woman. We've yeah. got That Don't Impress Me Much. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm, st- I'm that, still... That's kind of, thing. kind of running a bit. <laughs> um, but that's, I didn't know much really of her not. other material. No, no. No, me neither. And... Um, I don't know about you, but I mean, I, the music wasn't didn't stir me to my soul. It was mm. it was country rock, I suppose. It was well, it, it was oh, it was soft rock. It was, yeah, it was very agreeable. Yeah, it was very inoffensive, with just the slightest sort of hint. I mean, there was I mean, there, there was obviously an attempt to make this a rock show. We we've, we had 
um, a rock drummer who was who was more rock than rock itself. Yes. Um, doing. I mean, she did a drum solo. Yeah. I didn't think they were even legal anymore. <laughs> she did, we, we had we had a, a very rocky guitar rock guitarist. Yeah, we did. But at the same time, there's also a fiddle player, and there was an accordion player. Yes. Now you don't see that very often. And then you had the dancers who em embraced all sorts of styles. One, they did some country stuff. Yeah. But then was there was. Um, it was almost like a cabaret style thing with you know with twirling chairs around the yes. stage. Other times it was just like pop. So they, they hinted towards all sorts. a Celtic river dance. Type yes, there was a river dance. Moment. That's right. Yeah. It, so so the question is: Was this a wonderful embracing of musical cultures, or was it falling between two stools? I well, I think the answer to that depends on how much you knew and love Shania Twain uh, and, and know, knowing how much you know <laughs> where do you start uh, I, I thought it was a little bit here and there Yeah, I, I felt like I was jumping around the genres quite a lot Yeah, uh, but I didn't get that from the people around me though I think all the people there knew her loved her absolutely soaked up the performance oh definitely and yeah. it was a you couldn't fault the, the delivery of the performance. It was very oh, no. well done. Well, I mean, she's what? She's 53? 53. Okay. And uh, well, if I had that much energy when I hit 53, I wouldn't complain. No, no. It was, it was, in that regard, it was very, very good. Um, there, uh, and she uh, mentioned her voice. I thought her voice sounded pretty good. I had a little question mark that just popped up in the back of my mind What's in the now? first bit of the show. And then I, then I put it to one side. But I see another media outlet has also raised this. And this was... Was Shania actually singing all the time? So we're saying, was it actually her voice we were hearing? Oh, well, it might have been her voice, but well, was it a, a her live, live, her live voice? voice yes. Um, it, it, look, I'd be. It did cross my mind for some yeah. reason. I early on, I thought, oh, because she was moving around the stage quite a lot. Yeah, it was yeah. very energetic performance, yeah. um, and maybe the little bit of chit chat between songs didn't sound as breathless as I thought it might have that thought oh. crossed my mind Ooh. but then I, I to be honest I dismissed it yeah and I enjoyed the rest of the performance so whether I don't know if it's true or not it was a thought um and I don't have any evidence to say whether it's true but it just was an idea that flicked across the back of my mind well let's face it right when when you Shania Twain when you play Spark Arena um you're no longer oh, don't know if she ever was necessarily but you're not now performing for the reviewers and the critics you are performing for the devoted fans yeah what did i mean I, I was there with you and i saw people down the front bopping their hearts out i saw the people around us who were on their feet yeah um does it even really matter what we think no it doesn't it doesn't actually and there was one moment in the uh, show steve i think unfortunately you had to leave a little early but um at one point in the show she leaves the center of stage mm -hmm. and pops up in a little raised platform right in the middle of the floor area. Right, that, that's becoming quite it is. Yeah, days, it is. It? And yeah. so she's there on a slightly raised platform, yeah. uh, acoustic guitar in hand, does a number, and then says, oh, look, I'm going to have a... Uh, gets to know a couple of the members of the audience. Right, right. So she picked out one young woman yeah. who was, all, I don't know, youngish woman who was ex very excited to go up on stage and, and, and say hello to Shania, um, posed for a selfie. I think she was from Gisborne and she was there with a bunch of her girlfriends and she was absolutely ecstatic and she left. And then Shania chose another woman. Okay. Her, uh, an older woman. I think she was a middle-aged-ish woman. Who was, she, she felt like a woman, did she? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman, uh, got a red dress, long blonde hair, I remember yeah. her image very well, got up on stage and there's a little bit of chit chat and it turns out she's there by herself. Oh dear. Which is okay. And and then it turns out it's she's there for a celebration of her 50th birthday. She was at the show on her own. Yes. For her 50th so birthday. So one felt an emotion begin yeah. to infiltrate the audience and then but Shania sort of went with it and said, oh, look, you know, um, it's not lovely to have, have you here. Um, got the phone out to do the selfie. It was not, it's a phone that Shania wasn't familiar with, Ooh. didn't know how to operate it. Oh. So it, somehow they ended up calling um, this woman's, um, her, Maria was her name, Maria's yeah. good buddy uh, down in Papa Mo and right. Bay of Plenty, getting him on the phone, and he ends up having a chat with Shania. This is a surreal moment. It is it? a bit of a surreal moment, and, and people were just lapping it up. Like yeah. this was this was a real moment. Yes, this yes, wasn't yes. a pre-programmed, choreographed thing. It could have happened. Could have gone in any which way. Yeah. Um, uh, but there were some delightful little interchanges. Of Eventually, um, one of the security staff got the, the the camera to work. Yeah. And right at the end, everyone bursts into "Happy Birthday of course, to You." Of course, of course. 
And so, I just thought that moment uh, just showed the connection between the artist and the audience in a way that you're not going to get in a, a beautifully choreographed sequence on the stage where there's that distance between the artist yeah. and the audience. And I and I, I kind of really bought into the whole thing from that point on, I have to say. And that, I, I must say, was, was kind of my objection. I mean, I saw... It's, I'm not lumping all female solo artists in together. It's going to sound a bit like that. I don't mean to. Yeah. But people like Pink, for example, earlier in the year, um, who have a very, very slick, very choreographed stage show with lots of dancers around. Um, I did sometimes get the feeling, even though I was very impressed with the show, I did get the feeling that she was kind of performing a rehearsed routine, which which is totally reasonable. That's what she does, and that's what people pay to see. But, yeah, obviously I didn't see quite as much yeah. as the Twain show as you did, but I didn't get the feeling that it's quite as constrained. There did seem to be a little bit more yeah. spontaneity. Well, there was, there was uh, her chit-chat was seemed to be fairly loose you yeah. know, in between songs. Yeah. Um, but other, actually, I, I mean, I do have a couple of, I had a couple of issues with it. Um, some of the sequencing, I thought, uh, to allow her to get off stage somewhere else and to change her costume, yeah. they had a couple of instrumental breaks. I don't know if oh, you yeah. were there for one of them. I think you were. I was, yeah. And it was quite a hard, almost a heavy rock sort yes, of thing. Two was. guitarists trading the power chords. With, yes. And it didn't feel like, I thought it felt a little bit out, out of place a little bit. And there was a second one later on. Yeah. And I just thought for all the true country music aficionados there, they, they yeah. might have felt that wasn't perhaps what they were expecting. I mean, like I said before, you know, it is most much of her music is is somewhat inoffensive. Yeah, um, it, that's fine for what she does, but but you don't always get an edge from it. And again, bringing Pink up again, cause yeah, it's kind of a, a relevant comparison again. Um, she did one cover version, and that was Nirvana "Smells Like Teen Spirit," right. which is not what you'd expect from no. artists like that. Yeah. and and so it's interesting when they are sort of stepping away from their their actual recorded work and give the opportunity to, to sort of just have a little bit of fun. It's interesting to see where they go. It is, yeah. So if that's what Shania Twain's revealing is that, that deep down inside, <laughs> she, she's, she's not so much Willie Nelson, she's more the tragically hit. That's, that's kind of intriguing. Really, it is, it? it is. Uh, there was one, there was one um, overly saccharine moment, I thought, well, where, course, um, where she just got to the side of the stage and played a little briefish sequence of edited highlights of the music videos. Yeah, that's cheesy. I thought I thought that was a bit cheesy. Yes. Um, the audience seemed to like it, but I, I thought that was unnecessary. It, unless that she needed a breather or something. But it, it, it well, it, it, that, that that depends on whether she was lip syncing or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so overall, I was impressed. Yeah. It's not it's not my my music really, but it was a good show. It was um, inventive because yeah. she had, oh, the, this, we should mention the stage with these big five big cubes. Yeah, the actual setting itself the set was moved yeah. around and they became mm. video screens, or sometimes the band members got on top of the cubes yes. and were raised and lowered. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that was interesting and inventive and yeah. trying to freshen up, I guess, the artist's performance and yeah. delivery. Yeah. So, so it's worth mentioning, of course, on our website cravepodcast.com yes so I'll get a quick plug in there uh, we did have uh, uh, one of our regular photographers David Watson was along at the show he took some cracking shots yeah so if you want to see what the show actually looked like yes get yourself to cravepodcast.com yeah. that's cravepodcast.com <laughs> And you'll see some fantastic shots yeah. to, to. I mean, Simon, obviously, you do a fantastic job. You know, you you paint pictures with words. Ah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but there's nothing better <laughs> than actually taking pictures. Of course, to be, of to course. Be fair. So to so give it a look there. I mean, overall. Um, I mean, you know, she she played two nights at Spark Arena. Yeah. She sold what twenty or thousand tickets. The night we were there, did you see a single empty seat? I don't think I did. No, I, I mean, it, if there was, there was. A, it was we're, a we're packed house, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with Spark Arena, I mean, there's a lot of different configurations. I think they had it as open as they could get it. Yeah, no, it was a really it packed. Was, uh, to, yep. literally to the rafters. <laughs> um, That's true. And I'm assuming that the second night was probably there or thereabouts. So clearly, what I mean, yeah, we, we were reasonably impressed. But yeah, we, ultimately, yeah, yeah. I don't think it really matters. No, yet. no, it was a good show. Yeah. it was well delivered, uh, and oh, she knows what she's but, about. Yeah, yeah, very definite. All right, okay. Well, I think we'll. Should I save this for a little bit later? You, 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 uh, well, you should save the best to last. <laughs> time. I, I, I know you want to so badly. I but know. let's talk about something else that we both we both yes. um, seen. Yes, and this is a film which. Um, we mentioned in the introduction, uh, based on a novel by Ian McEwan. In fact, he was involved in writing the screenplay. Yes, he was, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, it's the Children Act, Emma Thompson playing um, Judge Fiona May, 
and we meet her and her husband Jack. Jack's played by Stanley Tucci. Yeah. Um, she's a high ranking judge. Um, she rules on all sorts of sensitive cases involving families. Yes. And the central case is this young teenager called Adam, played by Fionn Whitehead. I'm not yeah. sure you pronounce the Fionn, F I O N N. Is that yeah, a... Fionn, I guess? I'm not really sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's Adam. Yes. He's a teenager. His parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. He's Poor Adam has leukemia, but his parents do not want him to have a blood transfusion. It's against their beliefs. But the, the hospital saying, if you don't have this transfusion, you're probably going to die. Yes. And and so Fiona, um, sorry, um, um, getting my Fiona's mixed up. Um, no, Fiona, Fiona May, it is Fiona, Fiona May. Yeah. Fiona May, the judge. Milady. Thompson, Milady. It's Milady to you. Uh, is called into this case to, to, to judge on it. And she goes to meet Adam. And she talks to the medical experts she talks to the parents and she has to come up with a decision yes and so i thought it was very well played well i mean it's got emma thompson in it <laughs> yeah. how, how how can any film that focuses around emma thompson not be well i mean and, and written by ian McEwan yeah. with stanley tucci supporting i mean just you're setting yourself up for success here aren't you there is there isn't a single moment that, that emma thompson is on screen that isn't completely and utterly compelling. I agree. Just even like the tiniest details, there's one moment where she's clearly just exhausted and she walks back into a flat and just kicks her shoes off um, and then sits, flumps herself down on the sofa and fumbles with her glasses. And everything about it just felt utterly, utterly accurate and compelling. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's sometimes a tendency to sort of like overly naturalistic acting which gets a little bit sort of mumbly yes and it never crosses over into no, that no. it's still very dramatic very powerful but a, even the last detail the slightest like twitch of a cheek mm, mm. everything counts I, I agree I, you know I've spent um, in my news reporting days if you tell lot, me you interviewed then I'm, no, 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 no I'm not going to tell you that but I'm going to tell you that I spent a long time quite a long time as many other reporters have done sitting in courts right doing court reports, seeing the interaction between yeah. lawyers and judges. Uh, and um, one of the cases I did back in the 90s, Steve, was one of the early trials in New Zealand of um, where we had where cameras were allowed in court. Right, I remember right. at that time actually having a, a couple of conversations with a judge about the, the, yeah. the rules oh, of right. engagement. Okay, yeah. So I, I've, um, I thought the, the way Emma Thompson um, played the judge yeah. was excellent. Right. Uh, judges do have personalities yes. and characteristics and they do come through in the court well they have to they, they do and, and they're not always just you know by the book yeah. they're human beings I, I thought yeah. it was a really good performance from that point of view uh, well, I, there, I, there is if you remember kind of early on when this I mean basically it's there to establish a character yeah but there's a little montage of her dismissing lawyers in about three or four cases uh, yes and the the, the they're just the low level scorn. Yeah. Just, just, next, just, 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 why are you even here? Just get in my courtroom. She, it, it, she's magnificent. You, yeah. It's the kind of thing that, that, on the one hand, you think, you know, she can do that in her sleep. On the other hand, it's the kind of thing she was born to do. It's just beautiful mm. to, yeah. to listen to. I, yeah, I thought it was um, um, just a superb performance, and I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. We should just mention the story yes. and the delivery of the story because I think there have been one or two reviewers who have said things along the lines of well it's all right but the book was better i've heard this yes um i don't i'm still in two minds about all that sort of thing you we're here to talk about the film yes um it the book may have been better but th that shouldn't count against the film necessarily should it well are we being film purists i think we are aren't we? <laughs> yes but but no, i mean you, you, it, it asks a it asks one central question mm. in fact the, the young lad adam asks one very important question you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not sure you better help me here. I, 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 at the risk of giving a spoiler away, he does ask, why did you come and see me? Oh, sorry, yes. Okay. And and once he asks the question, you start dwelling on that, and you start looking at the reasons why he asked the question, then you think it would be actually kind of nice to get an answer. Mm. And and I think the way that the film is, is set up, it kind of deliberately has her avoiding answering the question. She, she kind of, it goes from being... Um, dare I say it's soft and cuddly which yeah. is kind of how she sets herself up with him very briefly yes. suddenly to becoming utterly implacable and the, the hard nosed judge that we saw contemptuously right. dismissing lawyers and she shifts her tone quite abruptly there and it's like she's deliberately doing that and I yes. would have liked to have known why 
I took it, Steve, that the we, we get some insight into her private life and the relationship she has with her husband, as yes. played by Stanley Tucci, and uh, um, so I and we I don't I think we can say without spoiling the story that at the beginning we meet the the, the, the couple. Yeah. they're childless. Yep, uh, and you know they may be as married couples do. They may have had a f- have a few issues, and so I took it that some of that may have influenced her decision to go to see this young lad. Okay, fair enough. That, yeah. that I, that, but I have to say, um, and I won't go into the detail of this part because it's too near the end of the film. I don't want to spoil it for people. Um, there's an important decision that Adam makes near the end. Yes, and I wasn't 100% sure I understood why he made that decision. And maybe that was on purpose. Maybe I hadn't, I'd missed something. Maybe um, I I thought, it, yeah, I, and I, I don't want to Again, spoil it, but but it, I... It's entirely possible that that comes out stronger in, in Ian McEwan's original Maybe, novel, which maybe. We, which obviously we're not familiar with, and I, I ought to read it. I mean, yes. it's school holidays. We've got loads of time. <laughs> I ought to. Yes. But... Um, I, I will tell, I have an answer, which I'm not going to mention on camera because I think that would be a somewhat spoilerous. Yes. I'll, I'll tell you afterwards. I okay. think I have an answer to that question. Okay, okay. Um, um, but with regard to Stanley Tucci's character, yes. could you have made that film without his character at all? I mean, it's not, this is no spoiler because this is in the, in the trailer. Um, he basically feels that the marriage has become loveless hmm. and he actually declares that he wants to have an affair because he's, he's, he needs that kind of companionship and he's not getting it from his wife any longer. Yes. But could you have made the film and told the story without even bringing him in? Was he necessary? I think he was. Okay. Because of the reason I mentioned earlier. Yeah. I think something about their, his relationship with, uh, with Emma Thompson's character lay behind her approach to Adam. Oh, okay. Fair that enough. was how I took it anyway. Right. I think we can say that Stanley Tucci, in terms of minutes on screen, is not there for a huge no, he's not, part no. of the film. But I, I, I'm a big Stanley Tucci fan. Well, how can you not be? I think he's fantastic. And even in a short scene, he just has a presence yes. and an integrity that just lends a lot to what's going on. So um, I thought it was all part of a story that was in part dealing with how a judge is, on one hand, trying to look at the law dispassionately, but cannot help but uh, bring their own life experience in yes. some way to bear on what before them in, in the court. So I, I thought it was important. I, I would much rather have seen that film with him than without him. Okay, that's fair. That's yeah. absolutely fair. You, you yeah. didn't feel that way? I, I wasn't totally certain. Um, yeah, o- other than the fact that the, the, the relationship that she either was or wasn't having with her husband possibly sort of humanised her yeah. and informed the decisions. That, that's all I accept. Yeah. But the story itself, it kind of felt like there, there was aspects of him, you know, like I say, declaring he wants an affair yeah. and, then, and then he does briefly leave her. And when he did leave her, yeah, we see him driving off and then there's about half an hour of her in the courtroom her visiting Adam her interacting with lawyers and the rest I actually forgot about him yeah yeah I probably did too yeah and then he, he does come back into the, oh yes of course that's right I forgot what I forgot what he was up to okay so I'm not quite sure how well that worked but I mean let's face it overall if you would to call this? Would you recommend people buy a ticket? I absolutely would. It's quite a, um, it's you know, it's it's a compelling story. It's quite emotional. Yes, it you're is. not necessarily going to walk out with a huge smile on your face. No, uh, but it's a richly rewarding film, really well played and directed, and I would give it very high re- marks. Absolutely, yeah, couldn't agree more. I would definitely, if you can find somewhere that's showing it. <laughs> it's not. It's it's, it's got a very very small release. Yeah. For a film which I would have thought, I mean, it's, it's not a, a Marvel no. thing. It's not. He's got no avenging going on in it at all. <laughs> so obviously, it's, it's not in. You know, yeah, it's obviously not going to lose as much money as Mortal Engines. <laughs> so it's, it's not in that that yes. stratospheric level. But you think with names like Thompson and Tucci in it, you think, I you know, I ended up seeing it ten forty in the morning at the Rialto in Newmarket, right? Which is a slightly obscure time and place. Yes, for a film. Yeah, I would have thought it would be getting a better release than that how many people were with you in the s- s- audience do you remember um, two I caught it in uh, oh and one of those incidentally was Debbie the guest reviewer ah well I went to I think it was St Luke's in the city yep 
I was the only one there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a really good film, but it, unfortunately... It is, it's not getting the recognition that you and I clearly think it deserves. Oh, Doesn't seem entirely fair. No, no Now, much. Speaking, of, speaking of obscure artists... Oh, ah, yes. ...who really don't get the recognition no, that, no, that they, they just deserve. fly under the radar all the time. You've, yeah. you've been very good. We've been recording this, Simon, now for... How long does it say on here? We've been recording this for... Uh, 26 and a half minutes <gasps> and you have managed yeah. to restrain and contain yourself I, mean, I can see every now and then your fingers are going over there right? <laughs> he's just, he's, yes. he's fondling it caressing it oh. um, tell, tell us about your yes, Christmas present okay. this is the Christmas present to myself it's Springsteen on Broadway um, I've got a Springsteen t-shirt on so I'm, sort of, I'm displaying my colours from the masthead here um, so Bruce Springsteen he's 69 now I think that's right. He's uh, just done more than a year's run at the Walter Kerr Theatre in New York City. It's in the Broadway district. Right. It's, it's, I think it's got 975 people capacity. Wow. So he's done five nights a week. That's intimate, isn't it? It is extremely intimate. It's a two and a half hour show. Right. And it's just concluded. And so he's had released um, a CD of the audio of what he's yeah. done. And there's a film of it now available on Netflix. So you can take it with you anywhere you go. You can, and uh, the interest. There's a number of interesting things about this, Steve. It's you may recall a year or two back he published a book, an, aut an autobiography. He'd written yes. itself called Born to Run about his life. Yes. So this, and he's done solo shows in the past, in, yeah. solo tours in the past. Yes. So this is a, a combination of bringing together that the uh, the solo performance. Yes. With the writing, it's been rewritten a bit to fit the stage of his autobiography. And you get a script. It's an odd thing, I suppose. It's a it's a show with live performances interspersed with scripted monologue, right? Reflections on his life. A far cry. I know you, I can hear the uh, the question bubbling away in your back of your mind. On, Not like Stevie on. Nicks, was it? Um, but no, no, no. no. Look, look, you know, <laughs> nearly a year of therapy, mate. I finally <laughs> managed to suppress that memory. Why did you have to rip that? Oh yes, yes. Yeah, sorry. Again? This is a far cry from that. Um, he's a good writer, um, and he writes um, and gives the audience insights into his own life, his neighborhood, his mother, his father, how he got into rock and roll, the impact of Elvis Presley. Yeah. He does a huge, quite a big section about Elvis, but never mentions his name. It was, I thought it was quite interesting. How does he do that? Well, he just talks about how in 1956, on a Sunday night, every, all of America watched this guy perform on oh, TV right. and he just tells it like that it's really just interesting just detail that anyone yeah, would anyone, know you, you, and it, it, it the impact was massive on him uh, there's a little bit of politicising not that much but a bit uh, and then towards the end he, he wraps it up he, there's some reflections on, on um, adult relationships personal relationships okay. his wife Patty Scalfer joins him on stage for a couple of songs um, the, the songs are Mostly the big hits, um, uh, most of the time, uh, Born in the USA, 10th Avenue Freeze Out, Born to Run, of course, Dancing in the Dark, um, with a few, maybe not quite uh, as well-known ones like My Father's House from the Nebraska yeah. album or Long Time Coming from um, Devils and Dusty. I know the, I didn't have to think about that. Yeah. I knew that. Um, if, so, if you think he's obscure, <laughs> uh, he is. This works because it's just, one, it feels like it's a one-on-one -on -one, yeah. uh Reflection, but in a thousand seats of venue, yeah, it really is going to have that level of immediacy, yeah. isn't it? Surely, yeah. And the good thing about I, I listened to the CD first. I yeah. really enjoyed it. I felt it compelling. And the thing about watching him do it is, of course, you get the, the facial expressions, the intakes of breath, the pauses seem a little more poignant. Yes, uh, and um, it fe it feels honest. Yeah, I mean, it's scripted. Okay, so yeah. it's not compl You know, he's picking and choosing what he wants to tell you. But um, I found some real lump on the throat moments, especially right. about his father. Um, I've, I've been following him for 40 years. And I know in the 70s and 80s, he would, he'd ramble on during his concerts with little chats yeah. for a long time. And yeah. he often talked about his dad right. and the troubled relationship he had with his dad. Yeah. Uh, and so this kind of brings it full circle. I found it extremely touching. I am a big fan, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving a, a biased view. But I think if you didn't know much about him, this would give you a sense of his music and a sense of the bloke. Right. And I think it's extremely worthwhile. I think it's one of the best things he's done. I would say that, wouldn't I? And that, that <laughs> coming from you, Simon. Coming from you. So, so, again, I'll have to ask the question. And I'm, I'm asking a question knowing 
the answer before the words even leave. <laughs> yes. Would you recommend that people go out and get a Netflix subscription purely oh, oh, for oh. the purpose of watching mm. Bruce himself? Oh. Well, if you were a okay, if you were a Bruce Springsteen fan and you didn't yeah. have a Netflix subscription, yeah, yeah, you reckon? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're not a Bruce Springsteen Bruce, Bruce Springsteen fan, well, maybe not. But I yeah. think you should let's have a listen to the CD at least because I think that um, uh, it's it's a it's a great it's it's a storyteller in the music yes. and words. It's a storyteller and he draws you into a story. It's um, his language is very salty. Yes. Uh, the, you know, there's got lots of f words sprinkled here and there. It's a, just a, it's a very uh, relaxed, informal approach, but also well scripted and lots of well chosen words. So there you go. Well, I, I, actually, I have to be honest. Yes. I think that was remarkably restrained. Well, you know, I'm a journalist. True. <laughs> You're, all, you're, you're, you're also you're also one of the world's great Bruce Springsteen fans. Well, I, I think you've managed to strike strike the balance quite beautifully there. The, the, the self restraint involved in that was quite spectacular. Yeah, I think it really much. was. Yes. Now, yeah. um, we now, it's getting that time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. Everyone's I mean, talking about the, the year in review. I mean, I'm looking out the window, and apparently it's summer, but you, you've never. I mean, we're sitting here in t-shirts. <laughs> that's but, true. But then, you know, this is New Zealand. People wear t-shirts all through the year, so that's not saying very much. <laughs> but it is indeed. Yeah. That time of the year when we do the year in review. Yes. We should have a jingle for this, shouldn't we? We'll come up with one. Just, we will. Yeah. In, um, in the meantime. Yeah. So year in review, Simon. Let's okay. talk about this. Okay. What do you reckon? Should we do music first or films first? Uh, let's do music. Is that let's, right? Let's do music okay. first. So, so we've seen a lot, haven't we? Yeah. I, I was going back with, through all our episodes. I think this year, you, I think you've actually ended up seeing quite a bit more music than me. I think you've done more films than I. I think, and yeah. So yeah. We've, we've sort of balanced out that way. But we have. Um, music, I've, yeah, I've, I have seen some big acts this year, like Ed Sheeran, and, yes. you know, um, uh, Dylan. Uh, Robbie Williams, um, some reasonably big names, yes, some... Uh, and some smaller names. Um, so let's start with with the um, well, the low, the, the, the low point. I for me, go on. You're probably going to say because I thought there was an awful show, but I wasn't expecting it to be good. This was David Duchovny, right? Right. I X dodged Files. that bullet, didn't yeah. I? Well, and it wasn't good because um, he can't sing, right? And that, that's he can't sing, so. There was a there was a, a curiosity factor because he's yeah. a well known actor. But, but uh, there's a but coming. Well, there is. I think because I think when you say what what was the the low point of the year, my expectations going into it were low. Okay. Okay. So, so you know, it was disappointing, but I was expecting to be disappointed. So, so 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 what makes a bad concert then? Is it is it a concert that you knew was going to be rubbish and turned out to be rubbish, mm. or was it a concert that you expected to be brilliant? And to, like Stevie Nicks. Yes, I think it's the latter. I, oh, okay. think if you, I think if you go to a concert expecting good things and you're not given good things, to me that's more of a letdown. Oh, the disappointment factor. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And that's and that's how I've judged my worst, right. my lowest point so, of the year. So, so in, in that case, David, your coffee was actually quite good. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because your expectations were met I know. pretty much precisely. <laughs> exactly. Right? So exactly. there you go. If it possibly uh, exceeded. Yeah, maybe. I mean, just before I say what my low point of the year was, do you, do you have any sort of honourable honorable mentions that you'd for care low, to... And honourable mentions for low points. Um, not terribly, no. Oh, okay, I mean, okay. The, I mean, Bob Dylan was was just. I don't know. I don't think it was bad so much as it was barking, <laughs> and and there's not much else could be said about that. I mean, Rag, <laughs> Rag and Bone Man. If we go back earlier in the year, I, I did an interview with Sue Wells down in Christchurch yes. about this, and, and 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 she raved, and and I, I couldn't quite couldn't quite get over the line. Okay. I, I, I I liked him, but I just felt like okay, this, 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 this one hit wonder. Okay, and not. Quite, not quite there yet. Okay, but but I, I, I'm possibly being unkind there because nothing, nothing in the entire year will compete with my big disappointment. Okay, go on, suck it to me. Well, um, anyone who's been listening to Crave recently will will know. Oh, that, I know what you're going to say. Yes, yeah. The the Donald Glover calling himself Childish Gambino and doing a so-called festival called Pharos. As I said at the time, I got a free ticket and I still want my money back. <laughs> it was it was the biggest pile of pretentious, up himself, self-indulgent, vacuous twaddle and also spectacularly bad organisation that I have had the misfortune to go to in a very long time. Wow. Okay. I didn't go to it, but I, you, what you said just 
I could feel the passion in your voice, oh. and and yeah, it's a shame. It's a great yeah, shame. yeah. You know the you know the passion you felt you wanted to like look, evangelize about Bruce Springsteen. Yes. Yeah. Imagine that sort of flipped upside down. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, all I, I I still to this day hope that, that Glover is sitting there in a room somewhere, just just thinking about what he did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where are you going to go? Uh, well, I'm going to go somewhere where I didn't think where I didn't go when I first saw it. At first, I thought it was actually better than the first time I'd seen this guy. But as the I years, quickly just stop and let me pass that one for a second. Dude. So I saw this. This is this is a guy I've seen for the second time. Yeah, he, he came back for a concert show this year. In fact, we both saw him. I know. Who, I know. Who I'm going and with this um, at the at first, I thought, oh yeah, that's quite a good night. So it was better than the. I enjoyed it more than yeah. I enjoyed the first time I'd seen him. Yeah. But as the years gone on and the months have rolled by and it's just kind of settled. Yeah. I've ended up feeling more disappointed, and I'm talking about Bob Dylan. Yes, I, I figured that. Uh, yes. And. I like Bob Dylan. Yes. He won a Nobel Prize, for goodness sake. He's yeah. a legendary artist. There's no, his influence is probably immeasurable. Yes. Um, he's known for not engaging with his audience. He's known for coming out, sitting down, playing his music, not saying hello, not saying goodbye, and just walking off. And that's what he did. That's exactly what he did, yes. exa- And he's also known for performing his songs in, in a way that you're not going to be necessarily familiar with. Yes. So reinterpreting the sometimes um, not just the melody line, but he even rewrites lyrics. Yes. And that certainly happened in his show halfway through the year. Yes. Um, at the time, I sort of thought, oh, yeah, okay, that's you. You're Bob. You can do what you like. You've yeah. proved yourself. Um, you can do it at the heck you like. Um, but as time's gone on, I thought, no, Bob. No. <laughs> but I came along there. All right, it was a review ticket. But I came along there and people paid their money yeah. to see you and to hear this voice that has been a part of their lives possibly for decades. Yes. And while it's sure you can have a little play with some songs, I think pretty much every song was different. And often it wasn't until he started to sing that you knew what song it was. Yes. And I just felt in the end um, that was too self-indulgent. I felt cheated. I felt... um, I did. I felt like I... You know, you've given me a lot, Bob, and I'm not, I'm not the biggest, biggest Dylan yeah. fan, but I, you know, you've, for many people, he's been a hugely influential yes, artist. And, okay, you're being true to yourself, but you don't you owe something to the audience as well? And for that reason, although he had a brilliant band, a very, very good band. Oh, yes, very definitely. Um, I, I, that's the most disappointing concert for me. Wow. Well, we'll tell you what, let, let's, let's try and ease the pain. <laughs> okay. Tell me something good. <laughs> Okay. Well, give me high points. Okay, high points. There are a few high points. I was lucky enough to go along to the City Limits Festival at the beginning of the year, yes. last summer, yes. here in Auckland. And I saw several acts there, which at year's end, I still think rank very well. I'm talking about um, this teenage heavy metal band from up north called Alien Weaponry. Yeah, they're touring again very soon. Yeah, they? Yes. They, they really made an... I'm not a big heavy metal fan, but their, yeah. their passion and the energy was was just remarkable. So they, These are the guys who sing in Te Reo Māori. They do. Uh, most, a lot of their songs are in Te Reo Māori. Um, Phenomenal. Yeah, it's, 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 it was great. Uh, in the same festival, I r- thoroughly enjoyed and would recommend the Australian uh, young woman who's a solo performer, a multi-instrumentalist called Tash Sultana. Okay. Excellent. And I really enjoyed Grace Jones. So you've got the young and the old. Yeah, girl, and you? Grace Jones was fantastic. I think she's 70. And she yeah. had the energy, the costume changes. I mean, everyone was just thoroughly, a short set, but thoroughly yeah. enjoyable. But I think the show I really enjoyed the most was from another older performing artist and someone you could argue um, didn't give us anything necessarily new, but just played it with, uh, I don't know, just the, still the love of rock and roll. And that was yeah. Melissa Etheridge. Yes. I really enjoyed that. It, um, I, I, she played with Grace, uh, Cheryl Crow, didn't she? She did, yes. And I thought I was going to enjoy Cheryl Crow more, and yes. she was fine. Yeah. But Melissa Etheridge, I just felt, I just felt that rock and roll spirit, and I, I thought it was great. Well, remember, um, I, I, I'm going to absolutely agree with you. The, I mean, James were very, very good a couple of months ago. Right, I really yep. enjoyed them a lot. But I always enjoyed James. <laughs> but Melissa Etheridge, uh, we're going back to about March now, aren't we? Yeah. And she played at the Trust Serena. That's right, in which West is Auckland, yeah. not the most prestigious large venue in town. Um, and she was touring, as you said, with Cheryl Crow. And I, I, I got a chance to talk to her about two weeks before. And I remember asking her, how can you keep playing, bring me some water every single night for nine or 30 years and still find something in that song that, that, that gets you through the show? And, and she said, 
don't worry, I always do. And then we saw her, and I mean, it becomes like a 10 minute acoustic guitar wig yeah. out. Yes. And it's phenomenal where she takes that song. So this is a song that, yeah, I mean, she's been playing for her entire musical career, and yet somehow she, she's still, I mean, she's doing what Bob Dylan ought to be doing, <laughs> yeah. which is taking a, her, one of her standards and and finding new dimensions in it. Yeah. Whereas Bob Dylan's basically just making up new songs on the spot. Yes, yeah. And I think that, yeah, I'm with you. She's definitely the musical high point oh, okay. of the year. And just on that Bring Me, bring me Some Water uh, line, it m- brings me to a thought that this chap Springsteen said, because oh, he's there's many songs here. Everything right? brings you to yeah. something that Springsteen but he, said, uh, Yeah, he... Um, he was asked that about, I guess, Born to Run, or, yeah. uh, and he said, look, I've played it a million times, but just in case there's one person in that audience who's never heard me play it before, oh, I like that. I've got to play it for them. That, they, they are hearing it for the first time. Oh, okay. And I think that's a very a yeah. good way to... Pre- so he has to play it like it's the first time. Yeah, well, or d- with the passion yes. and the energy so that, that person is hearing yes. a committed performance. Yes, I like that a lot. Yeah. That's good. Anyway. Anyway, should we talk about films? Yes, okay. Right, so we'll do the same thing again then, yeah? Low points. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll start at the bottom and <laughs> work our way okay. up. So, so, so low points. Go on, give me some low points. Well, um, it's just like, just like in, um, with the music, one film I expected to be bad and it was truly bad. I think it was my most um, scathing into review of the year was the remake of Death Wish. Yeah, you were a bit... Um... Uh, with Bruce Willis. Yes. Um, it you was on a number of levels, didn't it? It did. It was just um, it, just the idea of it, what the message it was giving about vigilantism in this yeah. day and age. It was, and I liked it all the less because it started off for a, a few tantalising moments mm-hmm. as if it was a serious and thoughtful take. Right. There was some quite measured uh, scenes in the build-up, but once it hit its straps about what he was actually this doctor who ends up going around and committing uh, killing bad guys basically yeah. um, uh, I, thought it was, I thought it was appalling I didn't know how they would have made it in this day and age yeah. I think it sank like a stone and rightly sewn at, at the box office I thought that but I, ex- yeah. but I wouldn't have expected that to be good no the film I've decided I was most disappointed with wasn't necessarily uh, an awful awful movie but given it had a really good actor in it an actress in it I thought it was going to be Pretty decent, pretty good, and I found it profoundly disappointing. And for me, that was the remake of Tomb Raider. Yes. With um, Elisa Vikander. Yes. I just found it... uh, I mean, a lot of these adventure movies are formulaic, aren't they? But I just... At some point, I thought... I remember thinking, oh, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. No, it's not. Yes. And it just... It was... um, Just... It was mildly okay, but it should have been so much better given the amount of time they'd had to work on a, a remake, I guess, and they had a good actress in the role. Yeah, I just felt, um, what a letdown. Something that could have been good wasn't. Yeah, it, it kept threatening to be a good film, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. And then it could never quite decide which film exactly it, it wanted to yeah. be. It kept so, on trying to be yeah. good. It's not, so it's not necessarily the worst movie of the year, but for me yeah. it was the most disappointing. Yes, and, and it's the only film I've seen in a long time which got a, a, a tribe of undiscovered... Um, Indigenous people referred to who are known as the Iwi. Ah, oh, yes, I've forgotten about that now. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. we thought oh, that's, that's going to play well in New Zealand, <laughs> isn't it? Yes, it's, yes. It's, 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 someone's heard a word and they think, oh, I know, we'll play with that one. Okay. Yeah, that it really was poo, wasn't it? Yeah, I like yeah. anyway, What about you, Steve? Well, I'm going I'm to go with Tomb Raider. Are you? For, for, basically, oh, oh, for, for okay. the same reason. I didn't know you were going to do that. For exactly the same reasons, because, yeah, I mean, it should have been a much, much better film. Mm. It, 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 it's a top cast. Mm. It starts off really, really strongly. Yeah, that you remember the the, the, the bicycle chase yes. through the streets of London. Yes, that's really, really promising. Um, and then it goes sort of it goes sideways very, very quickly. Yeah, you end up with that bizarre scene with the Ewe. Yes, and is it John C. Riley? I think who's, yes, who's yeah. their 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 chief. And you're thinking, where did this come from? How did a film that, that on paper could have been brilliant? How did it suddenly? Just lose its balance so horribly. Mm. Where did it all go wrong? I don't know. But it did, didn't it? Uh, and I, I, at one point, I remember thinking, uh, I, I almost felt sorry for Alicia Vikander. And, yeah. and I wonder whether she thought it halfway through, 
oh, this isn't what I hoped I was signing up for. You know, it, it had that feel about it. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it wasn't good. So, 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 if that's the worst, what was the best? Go on, give me some good news. Well, um, there were some good sort of serious dramas this year. Yeah. Um, going back towards the beginning of the year when we got all the sort of last year's Oscars coming through, and then we we talked about um, Three Billboards, which was an excellent film. I thought it's phenomenal. Um, in the middle of the year, I like Black Klansman was a great film. Yeah. I even later this year I thought A Star Is Born was a very well yes, done. Yes, it was. Yes. Um, I'll pause for a moment. Let you because t- <laughs> you're not you're not going to like the movie I've chosen as my best film of the year. Well, well so, I mean, <laughs> so, so far I can't fault a word you said. I mean, three billboards. Um, I, I remember at the end of it, barely even having the power of speech. Okay. I was stunned right. by what a powerful film it was. It was phenomenal. Star Is Born should have been pants. Was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Black Klansman. It's Spike Lee at his Spike Leeist. Yes. With all that that entails. Yeah. All the brilliance and all the baggage all put together to produce a an astonishing package. It was wonderful. Yep. But yes. I have a feeling you're about to go... Um, In a you, place you don't want me to you, go. You're, you're, you're about to do a Tomb Raider on me, aren't you? You started so strongly and you're about to ruin it for me. Go well, on. I decided I would. What was the film I actually enjoyed the most? Yes. What was the film I got the most entertainment value of? What's the film that uh, I'm most looking forward to in the first part of next year because there's another part to come? And the answer there to- is, of course, there is. Of course, there is. <laughs> silly question. Yeah, really. silly I, question. I, know there, I know there is. I have to say, it was Invent- Avengers: Infinity War. Now, uh, because um, I've followed these Marvel movies. Um, I think I've mentioned on podcasts before. I used to read the comic books when I was a kid, yeah. so I do have a bit of um, uh, emotional attachment to the characters. And I think the the Marvel Studios, as opposed to some of the other studios which have tackled these characters, have generally produced a series of films which are true to the spirit of the original yep. stories, as written by Stan Lee, who just died not mm. that long ago. And um, that's a combination of uh, action, but self deprecating humor. Yes, and not. Not so, not completely taking yourself too seriously, yes, which I think is what the DC, DC movies have, have not done, done so well. So, so this, this film, film, I mean, this ten, ten years, years of film storytelling that have been brought together in this right film, yes. the, 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 the story of these Infinity, Infinity Stones goes, goes back to the very beginning, beginning of these Marvel movies. movies. So, so just, just to bring it all together, all these characters, characters juggle the characters, have a, a, a blend of action and humour. I just sat back and just thoroughly enjoyed it. This is a piece of entertainment. I'm, I'm looking, looking forward, forward to, to what, what they're, they're going to do, do with it next year. That's well, it. <laughs> just answer me one question. Yes. What exactly yes. were they avenging? Oh, they avenge whatever needs avenging. Do, do they get avenged? <laughs> yeah. if, if something needs to be avenged, they'll avenge they'll it. Avenge it. <laughs> well, you know, infinitely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, but, but I'm sorry, you are wrong, obviously. Oh, I, 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 I knew you would say that. You are wrong. Let, let me be the man to, uh, to put you right. Oh, okay. The best film of the year was and remains I, Tonya. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I mean, need I enumerate the reasons? Well, I enjoyed it. So well, well I, mean, I mean, astonishingly, Alice and Janney. Mm-hmm. Or Janie, yeah. whoever, I mean, however they pronounced it, when she deservedly won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, astonishingly, she was not the best thing in it. And, and, and if that's the case, then, then how good must this film be? Margot Robbie mm. was stunning. Mm-hmm. It is darkly hilarious. How you can get that much humour out of domestic violence, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the, they, they had two unreliable narrators going through yes. it. They're three, even if you count the mother. Um, four. I mean, that, you lose track of, of, of what's going on. This one. It, it's preposterous. It's it's wrong in so many ways. It's incredibly funny. Yeah. It may or may not be a true story. Yes. It makes well, no, that's kind of the point. Isn't they, it? They, they, <laughs> they, they, they are perfectly willing to accept that everything about the narrative is is deeply flawed, and yet it comes together so magnificently. I've seen it two or three times. Have now. you? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and it holds up. It's, it wasn't just the the, you know, the whiz bang of the first time round. Yeah, it really does. I mean, we've seen other films like like um, oh, what's it called? Well, the death of Stalin was also blackly humorous. Oh and God, yeah, that was fun. I know someone you're talking about taking a, a serious topic and finding humor in it. Oh, terrifyingly dark. Humor. My, my mind went to that when you mentioned I, Tonya, but yeah. But anyway, but sorry, back to I, Tonya. And I was also going to say um, that we just saw recently. I'm trying to think. A simple favor. Oh yes, yep. a, a, another film which sort of swerves all over the place, 
but but at, at its heart has a wonderfully dark sense of humour. Yeah. So we've seen, yeah, and I forgot about Death of Stalin, but you're quite right. We've seen a few films like that. Yes. Yeah. That that embrace a dark soul and yet somehow plumb those depths and pull out the most magnificent humour yeah, out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Now look, I thought I really enjoyed it, Tanya. Yeah. I I thought, um, in fact, the thing you've just mentioned, the the way in which it's telling you a story from several perspectives and you don't really know where the truth lies but no. that but then whoever will what is truth what is truth what so I, I think that I, I, I'm not going to although I, I'm not going to uh, a shift from my own view about what I enjoyed the most I think that was an absolutely superb film it was wasn't yeah, it yeah. yeah great yeah and that was that was definitely, definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So so there we go. We, we've actually done an entire, believe it or not. Let's have a look at what what's our timing say on this. I don't know what it say. Well, it says I have to click on the right thing on my computer here, Simon. Yes. Give me a second. Right, it says we've been here for close to an hour, fifty odd minutes. I think we can count that as a full length, a full length video thing. <laughs> That could, be, that could be our new phrase. We do video things. We do video things. Yes, yes I think it is. Um, so, um, we're, Steve, we're, 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 we're now changing all your our web address to crave video things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, no anyway, no uh, I've enjoyed this first chat on on screen. Uh, yes. We should carry on with this. I think. I think we might do it again. Yeah. Sometime, so, yeah. but we still have our web uh, site going, which is cravepodcast dot com. That's cravepodcast dot com. <laughs> You can, and you can email us uh, yeah, please, yeah, yeah. podcast at cravepodcast.com we'd love, love to hear comments opinions about either the vi the video thing itself or the stuff we'll be talking about during the course yes, yes. of it podcast at cravepodcast.com and what about Facebook and all that oh yeah Crave Podcast. yeah okay yeah, Twitter Facebook yeah if it's on the internet so we're there yeah great there. fantastic so um, well yeah. I've been Simon no no I haven't been I still am Simon Mercer <laughs> and, and, and I'm Steve McKay most of the time <laughs> most of the time most of the um, time thanks for watching listening and we'll see you in 2019 see you next time <laughs>